What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Buccaneers franchise. We are finally at the end of preseason, and I'm sorry it has been a weird week for me. Um, if you guys didn't see my community post, there was a, a death in the family, so that sort of put things off to the side a little bit, and uh, had to, and it sort of just threw a wrench into the rest of my week. Um, but we're back here, um, and we are ready to start the season finally. I've been sort of itching to get back in here and, and record some content, and I was sitting there. I think I was sitting here last night and uh, I knew I didn't have enough time to do recording and editing. I just, I just didn't, but I'll, I'll still like jump in and I'll be messing around with stuff. And, and I was like, oh man, I really want to like, see what's, what we're going to do. Like how this team's going to come out. I want to see this week one game. And, and I was like, dang it, I can't yet. So I just had to wait till today to record. So I, again, I'm sorry for the delay, but we are here and I have already gone forward and moved to the final week of preseason. Mentioned that in the last video. I just want us to get to the preseason. I don't think there's a lot of roster spots really that crazily up for grabs right now. And I just want to see what we can get. And some of the games that I was watching were similar to week one where it was very boring. It was not a very good game to watch. And I was like, I'm not putting out another video with, with that kind of a with that kind of a game in it. Cause it just it was just weird. Um in other news, I changed Tyler Chambers face back, okay? All right. And somebody, um, I think it was Derek, um, commented, and he was very adamant about Tyler Chambers face being back. So he's back. All right. I, I put him back to this face. Hopefully it works out well. I'm weird about that kind of stuff. I thought the face was a little bit small for the body, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. I was able to adjust his body size a little bit in the edit screen to try to make it a little bit more sensible, but Tyler Chambers is back to what he was during the draft. And this is now our quarterback of the future, hopefully. The main reason I was so excited about getting this, this season started, and I could not have wrote this better, the way everything played out, but check out who our week one opponent is. It is none other than Trey Lance and the Minnesota Vikings. What kind of, of storytelling am I doing right now? Cause this is crazy. I did not anticipate having this big of a game immediately to start the season. But for those of you who don't know, maybe you just caught onto the series and you haven't really caught up. Trey Lance was our quarterback all the way up until last season. And he decided to go to the Vikings in free agency, which honestly really works because he's from North Dakota. That was sort of like his team when he was a kid. And it was speculation he might even go there when before he was traded to the Cowboys. So him going to Minnesota to become the, the new quarterback there a season after leaving us as our starting quarterback and leading us to the championship game and the opening week of the next season it is our new rookie quarterback that we replaced him with against him with his new team i mean you just can't make you, you can't write that any better you know what i mean like i mean okay yes you could but you, you guys get the point of my saying here i like, get that is just too perfect the way that that played out so that is another reason i'm so excited about this particular game so what we're going to do this episode, we're going to go through, get the roster cut down. I did go ahead and do the story generator players already because that was right before I put that post out. And this one might be a pretty simple cut because we have two quarterbacks already good there. We have four running backs and I think we're going to stick with four. But the one player that had an absolutely great role was Rashad Barr. Rashad Barr is the running back that we drafted in the fourth round. And he was already one of the fastest running backs in the class. Now he is by far the fastest because he got the arrived faster than advertised scenario. And if you guys, you still use, if you guys still use that sheet, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He got plus four in his speed and his acceleration. So now he is a 99 speed and a 98 acceleration when I first rolled it, I'm like, oh, great. Wouldn't even have a fourth round pick this year. So I was just going through. I'm like, okay, I'll just check anyway. I should have swore Barr was a third or a fifth round pick. I thought it was a fourth rounder that we didn't have, but I was wrong. He ended up being the, the right pick and he ends up getting a huge boost. And he also had a boost to star. That was the other portion of, of that particular situation is they get a boost to their, uh, their development trait. 
So now I almost feel like, dang, I really want to get him involved over Zonovan Knight, but we can still keep four depending on how the roster shakes out. This is where we're going to have to start making some decisions, if I'm not mistaken. We have Godwin, Wharton, obviously, Palmer, Gibbons, obviously, Nick Smith, Benson, and Dawkins. Now, JoJo Dawkins is a guy, and I know. Guys, listen, okay, if you watched, if you have watched my franchises since the Vikings or this, since the Texans at least, you know I have a weak spot for big-bodied wide receivers. And JoJo Dawkins was that big-bodied wide receiver. I found him in free agency. I did uh, training camp with him. I forgot to mention him last video because he didn't get involved at all in the game. But this guy is another project. He is my this year's Nathan Givens. And look where we got to Nathan Givens. He's up to a 72, and now he's competing on, on the roster with some of these other guys. So Dawkins is that guy now. He's 6'3", 234 pounds, so that seriously big body receiver. This is something that we, that I, I really like to have, and you can never have too many of them, in my opinion. I know, I'm not, I'm, I'm a little weird when it comes to that stuff, but this is how I am. And then look at his ratings, 89 speed, 91 excel, nothing too crazy there. Route running needs work everywhere, but he's got 92 jumping, 81 spec catch, and he's got 77 release, so it, he has some decent qualities, and I'm gonna build him up throughout the season. And with us drafting Nick Smith, who I am super excited about with the speed that he has, 98 speed, 98 excel, and the kick return ability. Don't forget, guys, I'm not sure if I showed you guys this, but this guy can return a kick. 90 kick return. His injury's a little low, don't like that. But with him having that ability, and me wanting to keep Dawkins and try and work with him, that leaves Benson sort of out of a roster spot because that would bring us down to six receivers. And I just don't know if we have enough room for seven. So what we're going to do is we're going to move Jeff Benson to the practice squad. He was the guy who was returner for us last year. He missed about half the season due to an injury. Um, so, I, I mean, it, he sort of got outplayed. We, we played well enough without him in the lineup. So now it's Nick Smith's job to lose. And Jojo Dawkins is sort of that project bubble player that I really want to work on more. And I cannot do that when he's on the practice squad. That brings us down to nine players left. We have our four tight ends here. As much as I would like to keep... Payne hey, Durham, he can still go on the practice squad for another season. And I feel like Parham just gives us a little bit better um, rotation than Durham will right now. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to put Durham on the practice squad. And that brings us down to eight players. Offensive line now. We have Walker Little, the guy we brought in during free agency, backing up Tristan Wirfs. We have James Macklin and Chuma Adoga, who we, we re-signed. It was like the only player we re-signed last uh, offseason, backing up Cody Mauk. We have our new drafted Alec Patterson backing up Drew Dahlman, who is also new to the team. At right guard, we have Robert Hainsey and Max Young. And then at right tackle, we have Josh Jones returning as starter. Uh, Chukwuma Okorafor, I'm sure I screwed that up, sorry bud as the right tackle that we signed is sort of that in between he can play guard and tackle so he is definitely safe and then luke Gedeke, who is somebody who i might not consider as safe as a core for um yeah we'll we'll see how the offensive line breaks down we have eight spots to to free up here and i think what i want to do is i want to start here on the line and i think we're going to move james macklin to practice squad that at least brings us down to what 11 offensive linemen and I rarely even keep 10. So this is going to be a tough decision here. I like Little. I don't want to get rid of him. I like Adoga. Obviously, Patterson and Dahlman are staying. Max Young and Hainsey are both staying. So it might come down to me cutting Gedeke outright. And he's 26. He's 69 overall. I know a core of four is really not that much better. But at this point in Gedeke's career, I, I don't see him blossoming into something more than what a core of four already offers us. And a core of four has that in-between ability. We saw his stats earlier during the offseason video but he just has the ability with lead block and impact block and run blocking to actually play more of a swing guard type of situation for us and come out to play tackle so i want to make sure we keep him on the roster moving on to the defense this is where it's going to get a little bit easier because i have quite a few guys at defensive end that do not need to be on this team i did bring back william golston guys it's like he's like a a bad ex i, I just can't get rid of him all right last season i cut him and then i brought him back again in the preseason and this season i did it again and now he here he is again back backing up baker and um 
I I'm happy with it. But because of that, Najee Gant, a guy that we drafted, really did not pan out to be anything near where I wanted him to be. He's going to have to go to the practice squad. And then now on this side, plenty of guys. Davidson and Cansey are the guys that we're most concerned about. So Kennedy and Klein are both pretty much going on the practice squad. I think I'm going to do Jeff Kennedy for sure. And then... I want to put Taylor Klein. I mean, we have the room. I'll just put him on there. And that brings us down to three. So we're already getting pretty close. And we have four defensive tackles here, which is something we definitely do not need all of these guys. Dexter was a guy I brought in in free agency just as a fill-in guy for preseason. And he ends up being somebody that I could really stick on this defensive line and see where he ends up. So we're going to move Daniel Jones to the practice squad. And that leaves us with just two players that we have to cut. And I already see where we're going to cut him from. So Marco Walford is going to be one of those two cuts. A decent guy that we can build up a little bit, but he definitely is not as good as Troy Anderson because of that speed. And Servasia Dennis, we know he can actually make plays. Even though he's only a 71, he's done so in the past. So we're going to go ahead and put Walford on practice squad as well. And then, I mean, we're good here at outside linebacker and at corner. I think this is where we might be able to make an adjustment. Or actually, no, I think safety is where I want to make an adjustment. So Dean, Davis, Bronson, Shelly. And I have now moved Christian Izian to the cornerback spot. And I want to see if we can build him up a little bit to over overtake Duke Shelly. Because Shelly is now 28, who knows how long he's going to be here. So Izian could be that guy to, to fill in for him. Him and Thomas both sort of itching for that, that future spot here on the team. And I think it's a very simple decision to make. It's between Kayvon Merriweather and Najee Flowers. Because Flowers, of course, was a guy that we signed right after free agent or right after the draft ended. And then Merriweather has been a guy who has been here, but he's been on the practice squad. So I think he's going to stay on the practice squad. And that is going to give us the final 53. That was a very simple process, in my opinion. Not a lot of tough decisions to make. Um, which is why I really didn't feel the need to watch preseason all that closely with you guys because it just, none of those guys are going to make the roster over one of the people that had a spot. You know what I mean? Um, so with that in mind, it is now time for us to go to week one and then I will have to pause for a little bit so I can get the scout set up properly and then we'll go ahead and do the uh, first review, I believe, of the scouting and we'll do the Vikings preview to see what they've done in the offseason to, to change up their roster. All right, so I couldn't go ahead and start doing things right away because there was a lot of stuff here that popped up, and I wanted to make sure that you guys saw this one. So we have rookie QB1, set expectations for your rookie quarterback's first start. So let's go ahead and click into that. Some rookies will get brought along slowly, but Tyler Chambers is making his debut at the earliest opportunity. What are you expecting this week? I think we need... I think I want to show flashes, right? I don't want to have no expectations, but I also don't expect him to just go out and, and sling it, you know, with the best of them. So we're going to go show slap, show slashes, show flashes for this scenario here and beat the Vikings, get two plus passing touchdowns with Tyler Chambers. That sounds easy enough. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the hire and assign scouting right now here with you guys live. Um, I'm hoping I probably won't have this updated because I have to work tomorrow. So I won't have the spreadsheet fully updated, but I will try working on that throughout the week and I'll get that updated as soon as possible. But I'm going to do the hiring and assigning of the scouts right here with you guys on the video. And just let me know down below, do you want me to do this behind the scenes or do you guys want me to do this every year? Because I don't mind recording doing it. I just don't want to make you guys watch stuff that you don't care about, right? And I understand that not everybody is going to be as excited about every little detail of a franchise like I am. So if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I'm sure there's a chapter down below where you can just skip over it and not miss really anything important to the rest of the video. But for those of you who enjoy it, here we go. And again, let me know down below if this is something you want me to do more often in these videos when the time comes you know at the beginning of the season so what i always like to do is i always go in here and i fire everybody right because chances are i'm not keeping any of them so everybody gets fired i'm a horrible boss i i don't let anybody keep their job they're all gone see you later have fun at the unemployment line i'm just kidding and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to review the areas and see what is going to be you know what we need to look at this this year so right away at the regional breakdown it says the strengths are corner, quarterback, wide receiver. Well, <laughs> um, I mean, corners could be something we could look at. Both Davis and Dean are 28 years old. 
will be 29 after this season. And outside of Bronson, we really don't have a solidified option for the future at that position. Shelly, I like him, but he's 28 years old. We don't know what we're going to get with Izzy now in a new role, and we definitely don't know what we're going to get with Emmett Thomas, even though he had a good performance last week. So, corner right now is what I'm leaning towards, but again, we'll have to see what the rest of the, of the class looks like. In the West, it's saying that the quarterback, left tackle, and outside linebacker are going to be the, the strengths. Central, corners, free safeties, right ends. Okay, good to know. Northeast, quarterback again, tight end and corner. And the Southeast, corner, wide receiver, and D tackle. Now let's take a look at the actual prospects. And here we go. This is my first time seeing this class as well, guys. I have not seen this before right this second. So this is my general reaction and your guys' general reaction all together. This is fun. Quarterbacks. We don't care about quarterbacks this year, even though there's quite a few good ones. Demarius Langford, Gordon Landry, Dan Short, Cole Huffman, Thomas Backus, Greg Hendricks, and Justin Sanazera's seven potential first round quarterbacks. Wow. Where was this last year? I don't think I would have had to trade at all to get a quarterback if we had this kind of a pick, um, if we had this kind of a selection during last season. Okay, well, even though there's a lot of them, we're not going to be focusing on them because we have our guy in Tyler Chambers and we got to at least give him a few seasons and see what he's got before we can, you know, consider looking at quarterbacks again. Running backs. This is another area where I don't think we're going to need anything. And if it would be, it'd be probably late, but even then, probably not. And there really isn't a lot of, of players here. Dobson, the first guy, but he's not even a solid round one. And then Trayvon Jones is round two to three. Rashad Blake, round three to four. And we have a few day three guys. Okay, a whole bunch of day three guys. Wow. So 10 day three running backs. So not a lot of stuff in the early parts of it. At fullback, we don't have a fancy one this year, at least not right now. Everybody's listed as UDFAs. So nobody to get too excited about. Even though I love me a fullback, it does not look like we'll get another chance at one like we had this past year and that we missed out on. Wide receivers, this is yet another situation where they are considered a, a good chunk of the draft class, but it's not at the top. Daniel Perkins is the only number one receiver, a top five projection. Everybody else rounds two to three, so not even round one talent. Wow. Usually you don't see this too often. Usually you have a few guys uh, tr like tr trickled in to the round one area. And um, yeah, not a very strong class this year for wide receivers. Not to say that they won't be strong, but looking at the projections, it does not appear to be the strong suit of this draft class so far. Tight ends, a couple of first round guys, a couple of mid round guys. Not something we'll probably be focusing on. If I can find somebody in like day three, I may consider it just because Aid Otten, this is something else too. Otten might not be here much longer, guys. You got to think about this. He's 20, 25, 26. He's a decent tight end, 76 overall. He might want a chance to start, and he's not going to get it here with James Blake. He could be a, another potential trade target for us to get some draft picks or to get something else. So we might actually have to look for a backup tight end, which is why I'm not looking at a guy like Kevin Jones up here. I would probably be looking at a guy down here like, I don't know, uh, day three guys, Oscar Curse, Gabe Newman, Dexter Devlin, those kind of guys. Left tackles. We looked at tackles a little bit last year, did not get a chance to really dive into them and did not end up landing one at all. And once again, they have a strong showing here in the first round. Uh, five of them, or sorry, four of them with a potential first round grade. And then it falls off a cliff similar to every single year around one left guard with a couple of in-between guys here centers actually have a few centers three of them to be precise and then it's all undrafted guys uh same for the right guards and right tackles not as prevalent this year so it's going to be the left tackles of anything um that we could potentially focus on for a certain area defensive ends we have not a strong showing. Okay, we had a lot of them the last couple of years, so it's sort of good to see that they're mixing this up a little bit. We have one guy up here, Connor McDonald, Martin Hicks, but then it's rounds two to three, and then day three guys, only six of them. And then to right ends, Austin Josephson is the top-rated defensive end, 6'6", 279. Now, that is a guy that could potentially fit in our system here. 
66279, that is definitely have more of a 3-4 build. And with us not knowing essentially what we're going to get out of Kalijah Kansi this year, he's had one good year, one sort of eh year. That could be something we could look at. Now, I'm hoping we're nowhere near the top five. So chances are Josephson would not be somebody we could target, but that, that kind of a player is, is sort of what I'm referring to. Same with Calvin Castle here, 64307. That could fit really well on that side. Uh, but once you go past Stevens, it, or Castle, it, it sort of falls down a little bit, and then there's not that many guys in day three. D tackle, very strong. Okay, rounds one to two. There is six of them. All right, and then we have a few guys, and then it's day threes. Okay. Wow, a lot of day threes. 17 defensive tackles that are draftable, and of those 17, um, all but seven of them are day three guys. And that is another area too, like a guy like Andrew Quintana, 6'5", 297, he is definitely not a defensive tackle in our 3-4 system. He would definitely be a defensive end. He could rotate inside, of course, on four down lineman territories like in nickel packages or maybe a, a, a normal dime package. But we can still look at D tackle for a guy on the outside if we decide that we need to, to target somebody on the defensive line going into next season. Outside linebackers, Melvin Battle, I think we're good there. I don't foresee us needing to really target outside linebackers for edge rushers. And I know we're good here, and that's a good thing because it's all rounds three to four. So no top flight talent at middle linebacker at all. Right outside linebacker has two guys for first round potential, a couple of uh, mid-round picks, and uh, then it's day threes. Oh, only a couple of day threes. Okay. So this is, like you know, we don't know exactly what's going to happen with Jermaine Johnson. Right. I, do I want to bring him back? So I want to see him succeed. Yes, I do. But it's a contract year. He's 26, going to be 27 at, or 25, going to be 26 um, after this season. Does he want to stay here? We don't know yet. Is he going to be good enough to stay here? But that also we do not know. Luvu is, is sort of supplanted, even though in real life he is actually more of a uh, he is actually a um, like a pass coverage run stopping linebacker. He's not necessarily an edge rusher. Madden does what Madden does, and the Carolina Panthers built him into an edge rusher, which is why he works so well for us in that role. But in real life, he just would not be there. So he's sort of surplanted in that spot. I don't see him needing to be replaced anytime soon. And so middle linebackers, you know, all that stuff, not something that I'm too concerned with. Now, this is where I start to really want to pay more attention. I haven't done a lot of, of serious scouting on corners, and I think this might be the season to do it. Alex Cummings, a top five projection. Chances are, won't be able to draft him, even though I would love to. He's 6'3". But there are plenty of other options here. Amari Moore, Quayshon Haynes, Tyrone Kelly, Cornell Skinner, Matt Cunningham, Percy Calloway. Uh, so a lot of guys to look at. And how many in total? A lot. Holy cow. 25 draftable corners. So I think this is going to be definitely our national focus for sure is, is these guys right here. It, it almost has to be. There's just too many of them to, to ignore that. So I think I can already safely say our national scout will be a tier three corner scout. And then going to free safeties. Dominic Alexander, Glenn McMullen, Michael McMillian, Randy Buckner. So... Again, a couple of guys. I'm happy to see that there's a couple of guys who are six foot and over. Because last year it seemed to be a lot of five nine, five ten guys. We have Dominic Alexander at six foot, uh, Randy Buckner at six foot, Keenan Arnold at six three, and then we also have Elton Collins at six foot, Peter Weaver at six foot, Juan Branch six two, and Shelton Porter at six one. And over at strong safety, the same thing. 6-1 there for Eric Sandridge, who looks interesting. 6-1, 221. He's a first-round projection talent. Michael Matthews, 6-2. LaMarcus Dubois, 6-2, 223. Another one that sort of piques my interest a little bit. Um, six foot, six foot, six foot. So a lot of taller guys this year, which is what I want to see. Now, knowing that our tier three is going to be a corner, I think it is easy to say we need we, we just want to uh we just want to set that in place right away now the question is who do we want our secondary position to be remember we'll get like an extra five percent or so towards this position because it's a secondary expertise 
So right now, the this three tier has middle linebacker. This one has wide receiver. This one has safety. That is interesting because there is a few guys that I might be interested in at safety this year. Um, and that's it for that. What about over here? Same thing, safety. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so I think what we're gonna wanna do is I'm gonna go for Rondé Barber and we'll do you know corner as our first, but then secondary we'll get a little bit extra percentage on the safeties going into the you know the rest of the season to try and unlock more stuff about that. And that could save us some points later. Now it comes down to finding what we want in the rest of the areas. So the first one is being west. We have to figure out where the most people are going to be affected, where we can get the most percentage points unlocked. So let's go to view region for the West. It's got three of the quarterbacks, but again, we don't care about that. It's got no running backs, no fullbacks, barely any wide receivers, barely any tight ends. It does have a few of the tackles. Now it's only three of them, but it is round one, round one to two and round two to three. So that is a good spread on the tackles there. Not much for interior at all. And then round one for right tackle and a day three. So if we were to do offensive tackle for the West, we would get some boost in Oliver, Donahue, Clayton, Winslow, and Atkins for draftable prospects, which is not a bad uh, thing to look at. Going over the defense, there's only one left end, that's Connor McDonald, and a few right ends, and they're sort of in the later stages. I'm sort of hoping we find one that's got a lot of good D tackles because I want to, you know, Go after them. This one is definitely not it. Um, no, 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 no. Okay, so I think it's easy to say that offensive tackle needs to be the primary uh, target of the West. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to lock that in right away. For now, I'm going to do a tier one there because I'm not 100% sure. If I can find a good spot for D tackles, I think I want that to be my my tier two, just because that helps along the whole offensive line or, or defensive line for us. So let's just get down to OT. Come on, come on, where are we? There we are, okay. And let's see, what do we have for options here? We have OT, DT, that's not bad. Let's do that. Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do Anna Han, Anna Han. Yes. And then we'll make her for West. There we go. And now it's time for the central review. This one has sort of the same kind of spread as the West. It usually doesn't have a whole lot. Don't care about that. Don't care about that. Nope. 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 Nothing. Okay, so it's probably gonna be on defense that we're gonna have to go for the for central. No defensive ends, one defense, or a couple of defensive ends, I should say. Nothing for D tackle, nothing there. Wow. Okay. Um. Oh, there's some decent safeties here. There is. We might have to go safeties for central, to be honest with you guys. It's got the boy in there, the guy that I, I sort of like already, just looking at his build. Um, it's got branch. Um, Michael Matthews is another one, 6'2", 204, Sidney Chapman. Um, let's see, what is the strength of that area? And it has safeties as a strength, so we would get the, the percentage boost there. So right now we're getting the strength extra boost because you get the extra 25% uh, for, for this and you'll get an extra 5% on, on the rest. So if we do the tackles that we plan to do in the West and we do safeties that we do in the Central, we'll get a little bit extra um a little bit extra bonus percentage unlocked for them so we're gonna go safeties then for here that is going to be around uh that's going to be a tier one regardless of what i figure out with with the with the defensive tackles it's going to be a tier one regardless because if if it's not going to be the tackles it's going to be the d tackles that we have a tier two scout on so this one is pretty simple um it's really just finding what else we can use in this scenario not seeing anything here. I honestly think our best bet is weirdly enough going to be the safety corner because we're going to get 95% on a lot of corners. But if we do a second expertise on them, we'll have, we should have a hundred percent on at least a few of them. So we're going to go ahead and we'll do that for, 
this so curtis Caldwell. i think he was actually here yeah hey curtis um sorry about firing you you can come back and uh you're gonna be going to the central so hope you like the cold and now we get to the more profound areas in madden's uh system of draft creation here northeast will be the first one we look at don't care about quarterbacks there's a lot of running backs still not caring there are some potential receivers that might not be a bad take nine different receivers that are draftable and it would be in the range if i did want to take a receiver where i would not early but later there are some tight ends not many later though i don't know if i would want to go as early as round two or three i'd probably go at the very earliest round three to four or a day three for a tight end unless somebody completely jumped off the table at me but right now i just don't see tight end as being a val a valuable spot to put for northeast i'm hoping this one has got defensive tackles that's what my hope is right now nothing for defensive ends no and really nothing for d where are all these d tackles i bet you they're in the southeast um wow there is really oh oh okay okay um there is a decent amount of outside linebackers on the right side and there's one on the left side so not a ton of players uh, there is a lot of corners which you know again if we double down on corners we could unlock more of them at 100 percent and not much for safeties either so it looks like it's gonna be between wide receivers where there are nine or potentially outside linebackers which have seven with the one from the outside the left outside um i almost feel like it might be a better opportunity let's see if if any of them has oh so none of them have strength okay so we won't get a boost for any either of those positions unless we go quarterback tight end or corner which i just don't think i want to do i say the better option here would be an outside linebacker if we go that route i want to see the southeast though first before i make that decision so this one is where d tackle has a strength so i'm hoping that this is where we will see a lot of the defensive tackles let's go and check it out oh yeah oh yeah a lot of defensive tackles here nine of them nine of the how many are there total nine of the 17 so more than half of them are all in the southeast that is good to know i think we're gonna have to go that route yeah definitely so we're gonna do a tier two with the southeast for d tackles I sort of got to look through the rest of these positions so I know what to look for for a secondary position. Um, not looking there. Okay. Quite a few wide receivers there. That might not be a bad move just for a secondary if they have that available, of course. Tight ends, actually. If we can get DT tight end, that would be almost ideal for that area. Not much for tackles. There just isn't really much available for interior line. Um, defensive ends. There is three on the left side and three on the right and then we have okay um actually quite a few outside linebackers six on that side and one on that side uh corners of course they're gonna be strong on that side there's 10 of them uh three and one so four total safeties okay okay so a tier two we have offensive tackle we already know that's really weak um middle linebacker we already know that's weak oh wow there is not a lot of defensive tackle ones here at all is there even one on this side no it's all for for linemen okay so yeah we're sort of gonna be stuck here we're gonna have to just do with whatever um dang it look at that defensive end had tight end but not uh not what we're looking for um yeah i feel like the best bet is just doing an offensive tackle so we get something done on the on the tackles that are in this class so we'll go preston lee then for the southeast and now it's just figuring out exactly where we want to put this northeast and we already sort of know that it's probably gonna be wide receiver or outside linebacker and i'm thinking i want to go more outside linebacker because we haven't really had a chance to look at them at all so i would like to do more of that 
So let's see if we can find a decent outside linebacker scouts at a tier one. Well, the first one is a safety, middle linebacker, defensive end. I think I'm gonna go for the safeties here. Off outside linebackers and safety, so Ian Sims. All right, so that is how we have it worked out, guys. We're gonna go and hit the pavement hard for corners with getting a little bit of extra work on the safeties. We are gonna get the tier two on D tackles for our entire D line. We're gonna do our first tier three. Our first tier one is gonna be outside linebackers with safeties on the side, offensive tackles with D tackles for a little extra boost, and then safeties as the primary source in the central with corner as the second expertise. I think that will cover a good portion of the areas of this team that are important. We have almost every, we do have every level of the defense included and we have some offensive tackles. So we know the offense has been pretty good. Now it's time for us to really turn this thing up on the defense and see what we can get out of this, this next season. There isn't much else that has to be said about this situation. Trey Lance gets superstar development after um, the season he had last year, which we know is not exactly what it says it was, but that did not make any difference to the offseason uh, ways of the Vikings. They brought him in. They make him their future quarterback. They give him that big contract he was looking for. And now he's literally going to play us in his first week of being a Viking. To add to the lore, the, if you don't already know this, I'm sure if you're a Bucks fan or uh, just maybe an all-around football fan, you know this, but the Bucks actually used to be in the division with the Vikings before it became the NFC North when it was the NFC Central division. So you have an old division rivalry coming to town. Their new quarterback is our old quarterback, and he is facing off against the rookie that replaced him. Tell me that's not a storyline. They brought in Antonio Gibson for running back purposes, which I like. I think it's a good move. They also drafted Ben Davidson, who is a real speedster at running back and will provide a really nice one-two punch, I think, with Gibson. They also have Dwayne McBride and Raheem Blackshear. Lyle Dixon is the fullback. They made a few adjustments at wide receiver. They ended up keeping Jefferson. They have Jordan Addison. They moved on from everybody else. They brought in Rondale Moore and Brandon Cooks at wide receiver. So it'll be interesting to see how those two guys come into the fold. Cooks has always been a really, really solid receiver, but he is in his 12th season. So he's not as fast. He's probably not as agile, but the Vikings might be able to use him to their advantage. They also have TJ Hawkinson, a great tight end. Somebody we'll have to keep an eye on. They have one of the better left tackles in Christian Derisaw. The middle of the line is still somewhat of a concern, except for Wyatt Teller, who was brought in. He will immediately upgrade that right guard position. And they have Brian O'Neill. So I would say a really good offensive line right now for the Vikings. Defensively, Michael Lampman, second year defensive end. They also have Harrison Phillips coming off of a big season. He actually made the Pro Bowl, if I'm not mistaken. And they have Milton Williams in the middle. Outside, they still have Daniil Hunter. Josie Jewell, the former Bronco, and Brian Asamoa are the middle linebackers. Marcus Davenport still here at outside linebacker, but they did draft John Overton to be that future player at that position for them. So that'll be interesting to see if he gets any playing time. Probably not. He does have the day one starter tag and Marcus Davenport has bridge players. So he might end up getting the starting spot depending on how Madden system works. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays itself out. At corner, they have a lot of the same faces except they brought in Teron Johnson and got rid of Byron Murphy. Funny enough, Teron Johnson is also wearing number seven just like Byron Murphy did. They have Andrew Booth and Makai Blackman along with the Caleb Evans and Kalen Barnes. So if there is any area where we can attack, it's going to be this secondary. Lewis Seen is the starter at free safety and Grant Delpit was brought in in the off season to replace Harrison Smith, who I believe retired at the end of the season, but he is very good. Superstar de development, 81 overall. So it's gonna be an interesting, uh, definitely an interesting game for sure. With Trey Lance coming to town, what do we wanna do against this team? We know that they have Antonio Gibson, but knowing the Vikings playbook, I know that they like to pass the ball. So I think we want to definitely focus on shutting down the pass. And I think what we're going to try to do is we are going to try and shut down the medium pass with the Vikings. This is something that they like to run a lot of motions. 
a lot of deeper type of progressive routes. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to do defend medium pass this week. And hopefully it doesn't bite us in the you know what, but we'll find out. And then on offense, what do we want to do? Well, I think we want to follow the same game plan. We know that that secondary is not that strong. Their linebacking core for off-ball linebackers is not that strong. I think we need to attack the passing game. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to throw it medium. We already know one of the game plans this week is, is to get two passing touchdowns for Tyler Chambers. So we're going to do just that for our weekly game plan. Defensively, I want to hold them under 20 points. Offensively, we need at least 350. All right, we can do it. And then on offense, I think we want to try and win the turnover battle. We want to try and protect the football, give Tyler Chambers a great first game experience. And there it is. This is the layout of the guys that I'm going to be doing the yearly training on, right? Tyler Chambers, obvious reasons. He's our quarterback. I want him to be the best he can possibly be. So he is going to be one of our six players. Rashad Barr. He was not initially, but now with that updated speed, he is definitely going to be a focus player for us going forward. Nathan Givens, I want to continue to build him up. Will he stay here? I don't know. I might change it to Jojo Dawkins, but for now, he is here. Timmy Baker, this is a good season for him. Can he take on that role as a starter and show us what he is? I want to try and help him get there. I see the vision and what he can do. We're going to make him a focus player. Same with Derek Green. He sort of got, you know, knocked down the depth chart a little bit. Now he's a backup. But can I give him that what he needs to get to that next level? We're going to find out. And then Nick Cross, the one young player we were able to sign in the offseason for free agency. Can he be a potential future player for us? I want to try and build him up as well this offseason or throughout the season. So these right now are the six players that I'm going to do all the focusing on. If you guys think that there's somebody else on this team that I should be putting here, Please let me know down below and I will see what I think about it. Now, I can't promise anything because obviously I still have to make the decisions for myself, but I do love hearing your guys' opinions on all this stuff. And as you guys can see from the Tyler Chambers thing, I changed his face and his number based off of, uh, you know, a comment just by one very passionate person about his situation. So I I'm definitely open to suggestions. So don't think you're talking to, to somebody that's not paying attention. All right. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take care of these uh, mini games and then i will see you guys for our first game of season three here we go opening kickoff of our third season we've got a brand new quarterback in tyler chambers and he is facing off against our former quarterback trey lance as he comes to town with the minnesota vikings and it is the start of the future for this team behind this rookie quarterback. Can he get the job done? It's gonna be a tough task, of course, but I'm excited to see what this team can do behind Tyler Chambers. And it's almost like the Madden franchise schedulers knew this was a big game because we get to open up with Sunday night football and we're gonna to get to see Trey Lance come onto the field first. Now we know Trey Lance has had his ups and downs with us, but we do know that he's also a very good quarterback when he can dial it in. Now let's see what we get this time. First play immediately goes to Justin Jefferson for a quick pickup of seven yards, a nice quick throw. Right away, we already have a big injury. Oh, a little handoff to Gibson and he gets outside. He'll get the first down, nice patient running. But during practice this week, we lost Jamel Dean to a shoulder injury. He is going to miss this game, which means it's going to be Carlton Davis and Paul Bronson as our one and two in the secondary. Something to definitely keep an eye on with guys like Jefferson and Addison as Lance pushed out of the pocket. He's going to throw it short underneath to the fullback, and he is going to end up losing a yard. Pressure got there a little bit and was able to force a quick throw, and now we've got him behind the sticks here on second. Lance taking a drop back, pushed out, spins around and incomplete, looking for Jefferson, but Paul Bronson, one-on-one -on -one coverage, gets the stop, forcing a third and long. Empty set for Lance, back to throw it. He's under pressure again, pushed out of the pocket, hit as he throws, and that's gonna be a quick punt for the Vikings defense coming to play to open up this season. 
And now it is time for Tyler Chambers to come onto the field for the first time in a meaningful game. We know we saw him in the preseason in the last episode, but this is where the story begins. Week one, first drive. Here we go. A start in shotgun, White in the backfield with him. Back to pass, quick drop. He looks underneath, he's got Godwin, and Godwin's got some space out across the 35, out to the 39, a big pickup of 19 on the first play of the day for our offense. Love to see it. We're gonna stick, no, we're gonna go to the ground. It's Rashad White up the middle on a little bit of a delayed handoff, and he'll get five yards. Nice opening plays for us. Doing both well, which is a good sign because now this defense has to be prepared for either one and they know it's worked for us. Another handoff to White. He gets outside and oh my God, he had an opportunity to make that a huge play, but he sort of hesitated there and it ended up costing us a few yards and now it's third and inches. Let's see if we go back to him a third time here. We do. And he'll get the first down, pushing past the first defender and he'll get across midfield. Chambers back, blitz coming, he gets rid of it. He's got Blake, and Blake's got a catch down to the 27. A quick throw to the side where they sent the heat. And Blake running a corner route and one-on-one -on -one coverage against Lewis Seen makes the play. Nice job by the line, holding up long enough to give Chambers that opportunity to find the tight end. Right now, we're opening up things with a great start. Chambers over the middle, caught again by Blake. That one is gonna end up going for six yards, but it will get us to the border of the red zone here. And because of that, Taquan Samuel checks in. I formation. Play action. And he'll chuck it underneath to Nick Morgan, the fullback, who gets the first down. Four for four, 50 yards on the opening series of his career as Chambers is looking to put us in the end zone here. Low snap. Moves out of the pocket, finds White, and there'll be a short gain of three. Second and seven, a handoff to White. Oh, defense was there, and they will shut it down at the line. Grant Delpit, the strong safety, coming into the box and make the play. Nice job by the Vikings defense. Third and seven. Chambers back to throw it. Pressure gets through. He lost it to the end zone, and it's just a throwaway. And we are going to have to take the three on our opening drive. And here we go. It's Trey Lance coming back on the field for the Vikings. First and ten. Quick throw over the middle to Hawkinson. It's caught for a gain of three. Lance under pressure, throws it to Jefferson who makes a good adjustment to make the catch and gets it to the 34. Setting up a third and one. A lot of throwing here to open up. They're gonna continue with it. Lance looking short and he's got a man. It's Jordan Addison out to the 43. Here we go. Blitz is coming. We get through, and it's going to be an interception. Carlton Davis undercutting the route to Rondale Moore, thanks to the pressure by Anthony Moore. And we'll get our first turnover of the season. We know what happens when you pressure Trey Lance. He can get rattled, he can get frazzled, and he can throw it into harm's way, and we make him do just that to get ourselves a big turnover and put ourselves back in Minnesota territory here with three and a half to go in the first quarter. Chambers hands it off to White, and he's going to take it for about five, make it six. Five carries, 20 yards on the day. White coming off of a really big season last year. Hopefully he can continue that with us this season. This time we're going for the screen. We've got it. And White down inside the 35. Brush set it downs for us. Single back look. Chambers going to throw out of it. And he's going to take the short option to Otten. And we'll get a quick four yards. Blitz is coming. Chambers, oh my God, almost throws an interception of his own. Lewis Seen is going to be wishing he had another opportunity at that one, and that was a clean interception that he could not hold on. And let's see if we can bounce back from that. Another blitz coming. Chambers throws it short, and it's incomplete. Good coverage on the outside by Teron Johnson. Going to force another field goal. So we forced the interception, we're unable to get a touchdown, but we did add more points. Holding a 6-0 lead. As we come back out on defense, Lance looking short off of the play action. Addison refusing to go down. It'll still end up at only getting a couple of yards. Not a huge play. 
second and eight. Ten plays, nine of them have been passing so far for this Vikings offense. It's something that I expected. And Lance under pressure again. He's got to throw it away. Anthony Moore and Jermaine Johnson both applying the pressure. And now it's third and eight. Empty backfield once again. And under pressure again. And there it is. Timmy Baker gets the sack. First one of the season. And another punt. All right, so we've had a few punts since the last drive. We've had two. The Vikings have had one. We find ourselves here with eight minutes to go in the second quarter. Lance over the middle. Hawkinson makes the catch and slips past the first defender. That's going to get them across midfield down to the 48. Not a lot of running so far today. Okay, and then as I say that, they'll hand it off to Gibson for a nice gain of four. As you can see there, just his third carry of the day. He's had 12 yards, so it's not that he's having a rough time of it. They're just not going to the ground very often. Play action again. A lot of play action looks for them today. And a lot of those kind of plays where it's just not really developing into much. And they're having to take check downs and putting themselves in tough th third down situations. Third and six here for Lance. As Lance finds Hawkinson open. And another first down. That's something that we did not see in the first quarter or in the drives that I skipped is just looking for your big tight end in those situations to find a, a quick and easy, reliable target. Now I hand it off to Gibson, trying to work his way through traffic. He'll end up with five yards on the play. Nice run. And that is what I'm talking about. Just give him the ball a little bit. Let him do some work. Second and five. Offset eye here. They're going to throw out of it again. Lance pushed out of the pocket. And he's got to throw it short to the fullback. And it was more of just a get it out of here type of play. And it results in no gain. Anything, actually a loss of one. Third and six. And they're going to stick with this offset eye look. And they're going to throw out of it again. And it almost spells disaster. But it'll end up in a field goal attempt for Minnesota. All right, so after the Vikings got that field goal, we tried to do something, but we failed as well. And now Lance looking deep. Incomplete. Bronson getting up to make the play. Bronson having to fill in in crunch time because of the injury to Jamel Dean, which pulled Carlton Davis over from his regular spot. And, oh, man, a nice play there. Anthony Moore, he has been all over the field today. Even on the drives that I've not shown, he has been getting back there and forcing throwaways consistently. And has really made Trey Lance's day difficult. Third and 10. Over the middle. Incomplete again. And it's Bronson. Both of our second year players making some great plays so far in this first half. Guys, we ran into the punter. And that gave the Vikings a fresh set of downs. And I'm very upset about it. But this is the reality of their situation. And look at that. Very next play. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Great. Love it. Ha. <laughs> Yeah, roughing the punter. I love it. First and 10 after the big pass to Addison. And now Lance looking deep again. It's incomplete. He was looking for TJ Hawkinson, but the ball was knocked out. And a fourth second down. But now Minnesota, thanks to that big penalty, has an opportunity to not only tie this game, but take the lead. Addison in motion. Play action to him. Double play action. Lance rolling out, looking, and he misses Jefferson. Oh, my God. That has got to suck. Wow. Big misplay there. And another interception. It's Izian having to fill in in the, in the uh, slot because of the injury. And he gets the interception first and 10 now. What a stand by this defense after giving up the penalty. And we're going to go to Samuel on the first play. And he'll get two yards. Not much available there. Jewel and Asamoah both over there on the stop. Second and eight. Chambers under pressure. Gets rid of it quickly. It's caught by Blake, who turns it upfield. 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. What a play by James Blake. Chambers has to get rid of it. He gives Blake a shot knowing there's a defender there. The defender goes for the pick. Blake spins off of contact. 
and then uses that speed to take it the distance and give us our first touchdown of the season. What a turn of events from that muffed punt uh, penalty to now the interception and the big play to Blake. All right, so the end of the first half, sort of back and forth. A couple of times we tried to make some plays, same with the Vikings, but we just could not get anything together. And now we're going to open up this second half with the ball and still that 10-point lead. And the first play to Samuel only goes for a yard. You can definitely tell both of these teams have new quarterbacks because things just seemed a little weird at times, you know, right? A little sporadic. Nice throw there to Godwin. It's only his second catch of the day. Uh, but, you, you know, it's just you can tell that these are young, still learning quarterbacks of these systems. As we'll go to Samuel again, his fourth carry. And we'll only get a couple yards. Not much available to us on that play, or on that play there. And we'll go right back to it. And Samuel trying his best, running this I formation nonstop. And now it's going to put us in a third and seven, which is where we're going to have to throw it. We're going to go empty set for it. Chambers back. Oh, finds Blake again and a big completion. He takes a shot, but he holds on and he gets it down to the 41. That was a big play there. He has been integral in this game. And off to White. Cuts it back. He's got some space. And he is down to the 32. Nine carries, 44 yards for him. As he has always just been that change of pace guy that can just take it to the house at any time. Finds a big gain of nine there. We'll go right back to him. And, oh, wow. Good open field play there by Lewis Seen. He comes off of the block and makes the stop of four first down. Really anticipated White breaking that tackle, but he could not get it done. A third and inches, and White will get it that time, though. We're going to throw out of this on first. Looking for Godwin and almost throws an interception to Blackman. Blackman read that route perfectly, but similar to Scene, just could not haul in that pass for the in interception. And, you know, seeing how much it's affected their team, you think, like, hey, man, we got to make sure we, we take our opportunities when they're presented to us. And right now, the Vikings' defense has just not done that. Third and seven. What do we got here? Quick throw. Easy completion to Palmer. And he's down to the 13. Oh, blitz coming. Chambers barely gets it away. Wow, that was close. That was close. Second and 10. I'm thankful he was able to throw that one away. That, that line collapsed quickly. Hand off. White getting outside. He's got the speed. He turns that into a gain of five. And Worfs is down. Not good. We had some injury concerns with him last year. Right away, showing themselves. Oh, and there it is. And guess who it is? It's Jay Ward. He's made play after play on this defense today and now comes down with the first interception. And he's going to take it all the way back for the touchdown. A huge huge play and a very bad throw from the young quarterback you just can't throw those things so late we saw it with Lance before and Chambers suffers the same fate and it's going to lead to the Vikings first touchdown of the day and it's going to bring this lead within three after this extra points there it is now it's time to see can Chambers bounce back or is he going to let that affect him for the rest of this game young quarterbacks have a tendency to do that they hand it off to White. Tries to dance around to find some lanes. He'll end up getting four yards off the left side. We go right back to that I formation. Look at Samuel, who gets a block, and he is across the first down marker, and now another injury, this time to Cody Mauk. Both of our starters on the left side have been hurt on back-to-back -back drives. Oh, wait, no, I see... No, no, I don't. Never mind, I'm a liar. I thought I saw... Worf's back, but I was wrong. Rollout pass to Palmer. Finds him for six. Another handoff. Samuel gets a lane. He's in the open. Down inside the 30. And finally dragged down at the 21. Finally, that line gets a nice push. And lets him run free into the secondary. Nick Morgan, the one to spring him loose. 
And now both Samuel and White have given us a big lift in the run game. Samuel going to stay in the game. Play action. Chambers looking deep. And almost throws another one. It was Lewis seen again. It looked as if the receiver didn't make a play on the ball. So I'm not sure if that was completely on Chambers or if that was on the receiver not reacting. But just lucky to still have the ball as oh, he misses him. That one is on Chambers. He misses James Blake, who was open in the end zone. That is, that's rough. Looking for the screen. He's got it to White. White's got the speed, and he'll get that first. That's a big conversion there after the last two plays. Big conversion to keep this drive alive. Empty backfield for Chambers. He takes a snap. Blitz coming. He fires over the middle. Wharton wide open. Easy touchdown. And we'll get that 10-point lead right back. Lance and company back out on offense here. Down by 10 once again. Pushed out of the pocket. Let's it go. Nice throw and a nice completion to Jefferson. We haven't seen him since really the first quarter. We've done a good job of keeping him in check. But now as we wind down towards this fourth and final quarter, we got to expect that he's going to be getting some more looks as they look to, to claw out of this deficit. Hand off to Gibson, pushing the pile forward and refusing to go down before getting the first. And again, I'm just surprised they have not leaned on him more. Only his sixth carry. And Lance immediately almost throws an interception. He threw that right to Jefferson. He was never doubting that he was throwing the ball to Jefferson, and Winfield almost made him pay for it. Double coverage right there. Wish we could have got our third pick. And we almost do there again as Lance's throw makes Moore come back towards the football, which allows Davis to make a play on it. He puts that up higher. Again, that's a, that's a big play. And this time he's able to connect Jefferson falling to the turf at the 36. And they will move the chains. Big plays being made right now on third down for both sides. Four for 42 for Jefferson. Two of those catches, of course, coming on this drive. Play action for Lance. Rolls out, lets it go short for more. Breaks off of one. Ooh, jukes past another. And finally, out of bounds at the 29. A big pickup of seven yards. Some good plays being made by these skill players. Second and three. And oh wow, they ran the fake earlier today. Maybe to try to draw us or, or not have us react to it. But Jermaine Johnson did the same thing last season when they ran a screen or a reverse to his side and he does it there again. Uh oh, Lance in trouble again. Spins around trying to do something. He's got to throw it away. And we're going to force a field goal. That is a big stop by this defense. All right, so there's been a lot of punts. I'm not exactly sure what last drive you guys saw because, of course, I'm making this up on the fly as I record it. As Vikings take the, the handoff here to Gibson for four yards. Been a rough couple of outings. If you guys have not seen him, it's just been a lot of errant throws by really both sides. And Chambers, you know, sort of putting us in a tough spot on the last drive, almost throwing another interception. Luckily, it was dropped which led to this drive here. And now third and eight, under nine to go. Lance in, in the empty set. And we're gonna get some pressure. And Vita Vea is gonna bring him down. Third sack of the day. We have done an excellent job applying pressure and we're gonna force another big punt. All right, well, we've had a rough couple of drives. Defense just got a stop in the last one and now here we are. First and 10, close to midfield. Chambers over the middle, he finds Blake. And Blake's got eight yards. He has been his comfort blanket, if you will, in this game. Six catches, 131 yards. A majority of those yards, though, coming, of course, on that big touchdown in the first half. Chambers again looking short. He is trying very hard to get the quick game going, but the Vikings defense has been all over it. That's where a majority of the tough plays have come from, where it looks like we might be throwing an interception. Third and two, Samuel in the backfield, eye formation. We're gonna hand it off to him. He's gonna get that first down for us and get it to the 36. Eight carries, 60 yards. 
surprisingly, he's actually had a better day than Rashad White so far. And off. Well, not that time. Defense crowded immediately, and he'll bring him down for a loss of two. We're going to go right back to White, and there it is. A nice run for White. He'll get eight on the play. Or, yeah, no, six on the play. What am I thinking? I don't know how to math. Six on the play, leaving it third and six. And we're going to go empty set again. Pressure coming. He looks short. I don't even know what happened there. I thought he was going to catch it, but he didn't. Oh, man. That's rough. We're going to have to take three. All right. Down by 10. Just under six minutes left in this game. Trey Lance comes out. They need a spark. Lance immediately looks to Jefferson to find that spark, and he gets it. Big play out to the 40. Paul Bronson has played very well. He's been matched up pretty much on Jefferson's side all day. But he gets the better of him there. And almost gets an interception there. That was sort of a bad throw once again by Lance. We saw that plenty of times where he throws it a little too short. And um, that almost led to an interception for, for the young Bronson. And now Lance, again pushed out of the pocket. He's got to throw it off his back foot and it hits the dirt. Third and 10, 50 plays, 41 of them being passes. Here we go, Lance takes the snap. Under pressure again, and he runs right into Vea. And at this point, he almost feel like they're gonna go for it because of the, of the deficit, and they are, and they, they have to. But if we get a stop here, that's, that's pretty much game. Fourth and 20, we send heat. They pick it up, Lance rolling out, and he's gonna fire it downfield, and it's incomplete. He gave no one a chance. And we're gonna take over at our at their 30. And if we can put a touchdown on the board here, that is definitely pretty much, yeah, that, that's game, it's gotta be. As White trying to find his way through the lanes, but the Vikings do a good job of containing that area and holding them to just a yard. Play action, Daniil Hunter did not fall for it at all. First sack of the day comes in the fourth quarter. And that was just a good play by a veteran pass rusher. Third and 15. Chambers looking over the middle and it's caught by Wharton for the first down. That was an impressive catch. Chambers looking for the pass again. Winds up for, for Blake. And he'll get him for seven more. Quick pass. Oh my God, we gotta stop throwing those things, dude. He keeps trying to get it to Wharton quickly, but every time the defense is sort of undercutting those routes and it's it's it should have been like five or six interceptions at this point. And again, he throws it short, but off target. Tough outing on and off for the rookie quarterback, but it's fourth and two. We're gonna take the points and we'll make it a 13 point game with two and a half to go. Two and a half to go. And if the Vikings are gonna make a comeback, they've gotta have a big play here fast. Uh, Lance is pushed out of the pocket. Cansey puts the pressure on him and forcing a quick throw. Lance again, throwing it short. Oh, a nice completion to Gibson. They haven't used him much today, but you gotta remember, Antonio Gibson is a very good running back out of the backfield, and he makes the catch there to move the chains. First and 10, another one, and almost picked. Gibson got hit hard, the ball popped in the air, and I believe it was Nick Cross who almost comes down with the interception but he could not track it down in time. Second and 10. Lance again, quick throw and it's picked off. That's two for Davis. Three on the day. And that, wow, I mean, what a, what a day, man. This defense has played so well. Three interceptions, multiple sacks, multiple times that should have been, that should have been sacks, excuse me. And there goes Samuel. Taking it outside for eight yards. We'll go another handoff for Samuel. He gets outside. He's got plenty of space. 
He's down to the 28. I really love the balance of what I've gotten today for the rushing, where it's not just White getting 20-something carries. Samuel is in for multiple plays at a time. That is the kind of offense I want to have. I want to have both guys getting the ball and neither one of them getting too tired and using them both to their strengths. And I think I've done a good job of that today so far. I wish that White could have had a little bit more success, but it's just been a rough outing in some aspects of the of the run game. 21 for 77. That's not exactly a normal day for White. And we'll have to settle for another three, but we'll take it. I mean, both running backs, I think, performed well. And um, there it is, 29 to 13 with a minute left. One last final attempt for the Vikings. Lance takes a snap, he's looking long. He throws another one, that one to Winfield and to add insult to injury, he almost takes it all the way back for the touchdown. Wow, he's been flirting with an interception all day when Lance tries to go to that left side. And he finally gets one to close this thing out. And once again, Winfield been a very big support for Paul Bronson, who's been put into a tough spot against the league's best receiver today. But both of them together have really shut down Justin Jefferson as a whole. And now we're going to get a chance to kneel this one out for our first win. So opening game of the season, our former quarterback comes back to town to face off against the guy we replaced him with. In the, in the meantime of that, throws four interceptions. Our defense steps up. And while he looks shaky at times, our quarterback helps us get the win today. I would say that is a pretty good way to start a career. And on Sunday Night Football. For the whole world to see. Tyler Chambers didn't light up the stat sheet, but you have to be happy with starting off the year with a win. He earned a thousand. Wait a minute. Didn't it just say get two touchdowns? Am I mistaken? How come we didn't get uh, the thing for that? It didn't not say just throw two touchdowns. Maybe I'm maybe I'm missing something. I'll I'll look of course when I'm editing, but I thought we we hit it. We got two touchdowns: the one to Blake and the one to Wharton. Weird. Okay, well, hey, either way, we open up with the win. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at the stats from that game. And this game was very one-sided. Right, it, the score didn't show it, but we dominated. 48 passing attempts for Chambers, 47 for Lance. So in the passing game, there was still quite a few from, from the Vikings, but it seemed as if in the run game, we were really controlling things a heck of a lot more. Um, we ended up getting Chambers 295, two touchdowns, and of course that interception, 54% completion. Definitely wanna see that come up a little bit, but Lance had a very rough day. We did a good job of keeping him in check. 18 for 47, yikes. Not a good day for Trey Lance. A rating of 12.7, guys. Wow. Rashad White finished 21 carries for 77 yards, 3.7 yards, and then Taquan Samuel did the same thing in like half the, of the carries to finish with six and a half almost on the day. Neither guy had a rushing touchdown, but I mean, we, we did a good thing on the ground. And then James Blake, of course, having 139 yards. Um... Wharton, 8 for 61 and a touchdown. You can tell that Chambers is taking more of a methodical approach to open things up. He hasn't really pushed the ball downfield too much. We'll maybe see that come out later on in the season. But right now, he took it short and it, it worked out, right? Do we want to see different things and more polished play? Of course we do. But uh, getting a win, protecting the ball as best as possible, that's what we're really looking for. And that's what inevitably he did today. And then defensively, um, we had a good day. Very good day. We had, what, four sacks? One and a half for Jermaine Johnson, one for Luvu, one for Vea, one for Timmy Baker. So uh, apparently four and a half. Not sure how we finished with four and a half sacks. But um, yeah, okay. And then interception wise, we know Carlton Davis got two. Christian Izian got one and Antoine Winfield Jr. So some good stuff there. Overall, I'm very happy with the way this team played. I would say the player of the game right now, for me, right? One, that whole defensive line. We got pressure on Trey Lance routinely throughout the night, but one person that I think really stood out on defense, not necessarily for the stat line he had, but what he was assigned to do and what he gave up 
was none other than Paul Bronson. He made a ton of plays. He was right there with Jefferson on multiple occasions. Yes, he had help from Winfield over the top, but of course you're going to when you have a guy like Jefferson you're going up against. But he came in expecting to be the slot corner with the injury to Jamel Dean was forced into the starting spot and had to end up covering the best receiver in the game. And he held him to a modest, a modest play, really five for 62 for Justin Jefferson. That's a modest day. And I'll take that every time with a rookie, well, essentially a rookie corner. So I think that's got to be my player of the day on defense and on offense. I would say that player of the day for me would be to Quan Samuel. I know Blake had a lot of big plays, but Samuel in the running game consistently getting us those tough yards, those first downs, those big runs to keep momentum going really helped us in the passing game. And I think that's what really led to James Blake having a big day. I mean, he had 80 yards on that one. So you take that away, he had six catches for 60 yards, right? So that's a little bit more modest of a day. But Samuel had a very big day. I think that was his best game, really, with the team in a starting in a, in a major capacity. Usually he only gets a few carries, unless it's by injury or something. So I was very happy to see that. So I'm going to try to do that every video for every game one player of the game on offense and one on defense so today i have to give it to quan samuel and to paul bronson let me know what you guys think down below with uh the move to put chambers back to his normal face and to the number four and what do you guys think of how the the game went today do you like seeing samuel more involved do you want it to go back to the way it was last year with rashad white and um give me your grade on tyler chambers and his first performance as for this video, of course, that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Before you leave, hit that like button, subscribe if you have not already, and turn on that bell notification so you know when these go up. And I will see you guys next time.